This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Consolation of Philosophy by Anicius Manlius Severinus Bothius. Translated by H. R. James. Book 1. The Sars of Bothius. Song 3. The Mists Dispelled. Section 4. Song 3. The Mists Dispelled. Then the gloom of night was scattered, sight returned into mine eyes. So, when haply rainy Carus rolls the storm clouds through the skies, hidden is the sun, all heaven, is obscured in starless night. But if, in wild onset sweeping, Boreas frees day's prisoned light, all suddenly the radiant god outstreams, and strikes our dazzled eyesight with his beams. 3. Even so the clouds of my melancholy were broken up. I saw the clear sky, and regained the power to recognize the face of my physician. Accordingly, when I had lifted my eyes, and fixed my gaze upon her, I beheld my nurse, Philosophy, whose halls I had frequented from my youth up. Ah, why, I cried, mistress of all excellence, hast thou come down from on high, and entered the solitude of this my exile? Is it that thou, too, even as I, mayest be persecuted with false accusations? Could I desert thee, child, said she, and not lighten the burden which thou hast taken upon thee through the hatred of my name, by sharing this trouble, even forgetting that it were not lawful for philosophy to leave companionless the way of the innocent, should I, thinkest thou, fear to incur reproach, or shrink from it, as though some strange new thing had befallen? Thinkest thou that now, for the first time in an evil age, wisdom hath been assailed by peril? Did I not often in days of old, before my servant Plato lived, wage stern warfare with the rashness of folly, and his lifetime too, Socrates, his master, won with my aid the victory of an unjust death? And when, one after the other, the Epicurean herd, the Stoic, and the rest, each of them as far as in them lay, went about to seize the heritage he left, and were dragging me off protesting and resisting as their booty, they tore in pieces the garment which I had woven with my own hands and, clutching the torn pieces, went off, believing that the whole of me had passed into their possession. And some of them, because some traces of my vesture were seen upon them, were destroyed through the mistake of the lewd multitude, who falsely deemed them to be my disciples. It may be that thou knowest not of the banishment of Anaxagoras, or of the poison draught of Socrates, nor of Zeno's torturing, because these things happened in a distant country. Yet mightest thou have learnt the fate of Arius, of Seneca, of Serranus, whose stories are neither old nor unknown to fame. These men were brought to destruction for no other reason than that, settled as they were in my principles, their lives were a manifest contrast to the ways of the wicked. So there is nothing thou shouldst wonder at, if on the seas of this life we are tossed by storm blasts, seeing that we have made it our chiefest aim to refuse compliance with evildoers, and though, maybe, the host of the wicked is many in number, Yet it is contemptible, since it is under no leadership, but is hurried hither and thither at the blind driving of mad error. And if at times and seasons they set in array against us, and fall on in overwhelming strength, our leader draws off her forces into the citadel, while they are busy plundering the useless baggage. But we, from our vanished ground, safe from all this wild work, laugh to see them making prize of the most valueless of things protected by a bulwark which aggressive folly may not aspire to reach. End of chapter 3